don't mind if I steal you for a moment? It's that time again, time for another installment of Anime 18, your daily dose of anime every day in May. And today's spotlight is on the gentleman thief Lupin III and his companions in Jigen's Gravestone. A handful of you may recall that I covered Lupin III at the beginning of Anime 17, and I loved the ever-loving snot out of it. Lupin III Part 4, The Italian Adventure, was the most captivating show I watched last year, and I'm kicking myself that I haven't gotten back to it yet. A thrilling action comedy with plenty of espionage, chases, and betrayals, but a bouncy, light-hearted attitude and just a hint of sexiness. It's the whole package and endlessly entertaining. When putting together my Anime 18 list, I figured, why not throw in some more Lupin? That guy can do no wrong. And boy, were my expectations shattered. For a second dose of context, Lupin the Third is a 50-year-old franchise of manga, television, and film featuring the lovable gentleman thief himself. The series has traded hands and undergone numerous transformations over the years from its wacky Tintin-esque beginnings to the gritty 2012 reboot of a woman named Fujiko Mine. There was even a time when Hayao Miyazaki directed a family-friendly Lupin film, and then whatever Jigen's gravestone is. After the series' revival in 2012, we've had three anime seasons, including Part 5, which just started airing in April, and two films, each highlighting one of Lupin's associates, Jigen and Goemon, respectively. The Fujiko TV series was markedly darker in tone than any previous Lupin adaptation, apparently drawing from the more adult themes and violence of the manga. I haven't seen it yet, but after watching Jigen, I can safely say I prefer the milder tones of the newest incarnation. But I'm getting ahead of myself. What exactly is Jigen's gravestone? This film, or should I say two-part special, is a standalone Lupin story that takes place early in the character's histories. There's political unrest in the vague Euro nation of Dorowa, and Lupin and Jigen take this opportunity to steal a famous artifact from one of the warring sides of the country. Things go awry when the two's cover is blown seemingly out of nowhere, and an omniscient marksman is out for their heads. Out of pride and curiosity, the two track down the assassin and confirm it is none other than Yale Okuzaki, a calculated man who makes out his hit's gravestones before he inevitably kills them. Turns out fellow thief and femme fatale Fujiko Mine has her sights on another Dorowan treasure, a little black book of assassination targets that would reveal a political conspiracy and arms race within the country. Unfortunately, she gets captured and put on display as grotesque sexual torture for the country's elite. And let me just pause it right there. Alright, we got Lupin and Jigen stealing some... thing. Doesn't matter. But it checks out, they're always just stealing random stuff. Fujiko wants this book just as a means to sell political secrets to the highest bidder. Great. Everything so far is typical Lupin fair. But I gotta ask... What about Lupin the Third makes you think a giant rubber sex robot with a 12-pronged drill penis is okay? Why does Fujiko need to be naked in a glass lube prison for patrons to watch as she's ripped limb from limb? This is literally the most effed up thing I've ever seen, and the sex robot and the demented mask perverts don't even matter one bit to the narrative! If you need an excuse to write Fujiko into the movie and have her do something sexy, there's gotta be at least one other way to do that! Lupin comes in, has a quick shootout, and saves her anyway, and it's kind of treated like the same kooky antics as every other Lupin series. In an attempt to make Lupin the Third edgy and adult, I think the team overcorrected and lost what made Lupin better than your typical exploitation spy thriller. The added violence and nudity adds nothing to the film and was actively distracting for me. There's nothing sexy about Fujiko sliding around pleading for her life, and there's nothing cool or even emotionally gripping about the ultraviolence. Now, I could imagine a complete rewrite of this film in the style of the 2015 Lupin, and nothing would be lost or even changed that much. Obviously, the sex robot would be out. Just make it some other James Bond-style villain trap, or even just hole her up in a cell. Add a few slapstick takeouts and a couple of one-liners, and you'd have a fairly passable Lupin short. And that's the bottom line. Even stripped of the gratuitous stuff that insulted me, this 50-minute special is anything but. Special, that is. It's a bog-standard back-and-forth with hardly any redeeming action or witty writing. The final reveal is kind of implausible for the 70s era they're going for, and it doesn't establish anything new about the characters. Now, I'm about as fresh of a Lupin fan as you can get, and there was nothing to be learned from watching this film. It's not any kind of origin story like it was pegged as, and nobody grows from it. Jigen is still a good gunman, and Lupin is still a good thief. Roll credits. Twice. Then there's also this BS epilogue with this shriveled up frogman, which I figured was just an easter egg for fans, since it certainly wasn't setting up Lupin 2015. Oh, but no, I'm sorry, that's Mamo, some villain from one Lupin film that aired in 1978. How random is that? I guess it's supposed to date the movie somewhere before the secret of Mamo? Alright, that was more substantial than that, I'm like, 
Am I supposed to know who this is? Was he the one calling the hits? Because it didn't seem related to the masked perverts. Who the hell were the masked perverts and why do they have a sex bot? I can't get over this. Was it insinuated that Okuzaki made the sex bot? Because he's got this weird robo skeleton in his lair that never comes up again and he's got a camera on Fujiko after she gets caught and put in the loo box. He seemed just like an unaffiliated hitman. Whatever. I hated it. I hated a Lupin thing and it's making me upset. The music and animation were as good as Lupin Part 4, but that's about all I have to say positively about the film. It's a pointless, disgusting film without any of the trademark levity that made Lupin a blast to watch in the first place. Gritty action films are a dime a dozen, but good action with a sense of humor is hard to come by, and I hope Lupin the Third never loses that spark again. Well, time to hop in my getaway car and get far, far away from this film, but you'll see me again for the next episode of Anime 18.